I, I'm not sure. I've not heard any information. We could move that back. However, the Brandon Ford Pace Truck. Can anybody beat Ricky Thornton Jr. and Hudson O'Neill? They've won four, two apiece, the first four. Lucas Oil late monitor series races. Can Spencer Hughes get his first career win in the series? What about Devin Moran? Jimmy yes, Owens, are you ready, my friend? I'm ready, I'm brother. I'm glad to have you back. Let's it's do it. It's so good to be back, my friend. 50 laps is the distance. It's going to be Ricky Thornton Jr. and Jimmy Owens leading him to the green. This is your Dixie Chopper Field of Thunder. Turn three, battle there for third. That is between Spencer Hughes and Hudson O'Neill off a of turn four. It's still Ricky Thornton Jr. out in front with two complete. Pair of 20s at the front of the field with that driver on your screen. Uh, Jimmy Owens in the second spot. Hudson O'Neill going to try to peek a nose underneath, not able to do so. Spence right now sits in the fourth spot. Joseph Joyner rounds out the top five, and Joyner comes under fire there from Devin Moran. James Moran trying to work the outside of the double down motorsports number 99. Back up towards the front of the field. Here comes the one. That's Hudson O'Neill. He's got to run to the inside. He'll take second spot away from Jimmy Owens. And the crossover move last time around at the loop. It was 1.433 seconds. The advantage for RTJ. He'll move to the top now. Searching out of turn number four. He's been running the bottom. Here comes O'Neill. Here comes Owens. Joiner now on the bottom. Uses fifth. Moran, Madden, Overton, Alberson, Brian Shirley. Your top ten. DJ four in the books. Yeah, four laps in. James and a 1.6 second advantage already for the SSI Motorsports 20 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. Good racing behind him though. As there's a good look at the battle for the third spot. Joseph Joiner has the 10 glued to the inside of the racetrack. And that last time by, he was able to inch ahead of Jimmy Owens. Owens trying to get moving on the high side of the racetrack. Owens with that run down the back straightaway. He stays alongside the 10 of Joyner. Again, a battle for third. And now Owens will tuck down to the inside. Jimmy Owens looking for his first one of the year in the Lucas Oil Label to Dirt Series. Madden all over him. Again, O'Neill won for the very first time at Golden Isles last week. For the very first time at Ocala, looking for his first win here at All Tech. But right now, he's about 15 car lengths behind your leader, which last time around, it was two seconds the deficit between Thornton and O'Neill. Yeah, there's a good look at Jimmy Owens still trying to work the very outside of the racetrack in the number 20. Devin Moran in the 99, able to keep him at bay. That's fifth, sixth, and seventh on your screen. Moran in fifth, Owens in sixth, and the 58 of Garrett Alberson in seventh. Those drivers battle uh, just about uh, three and a half, maybe four seconds behind your race leader, Ricky Thornton Jr., RTJ. Now with a 1.9 second lead over Hudson O'Neill, James, eight laps are in the books, 42 laps to go. Joseph Joyner still holding a solid third. He's never been on a podium in the Lucas Oil Labor to Dirt Series. Then it's Madden, Moran, Owens, Alberson, Hughes, Overton, and Brandon Shepard. Green so far as we work lap nine here at Alltech and the tail end of the field entering turn three. Thornton in the middle of it, down the back straightaway on lap 10. You know, I'm looking, James, I'm looking back through the field and one driver that continues to run the high side of the racetrack going into turn three. We saw this in the heat race, Cody Overton in that Dave Stein TriStar Enterprises, uh, Molly Pistons number 97. There's a good look at Cody Overton right there, the Thompson Georgia driver, a little sexy. He continues to rim ride around this half mile oval. And again, when he hits his marks, as you see right there, he's able to gain a little bit of ground. That 97 car with tail on center turning the wrenches, really, really good. But again, it's a live by the sword, die by the sword, razor thin edge at the very high side, as you can see. And when you miss your marks, man, you can either lose wholesale ground or you can careen into the outside wall. And again, we work lap 12. In the Deficit was 2.5 seconds as Thorne has picked up the tail end of the field here on the main straightaway into turn number one. Now Thorne's going to go to the outside. Oh, he touches the wall briefly there in turn two as they head down the back straightaway. As the car running in the back goes to the infield, I believe that was Bob Gardner. 
as they come out of turn number four. Yeah, Bob Gardner indeed was that car that yielded to the inside of the racetrack. Things are going to get interesting here for RTJ now because your race leader, uh, he's just about to close into the back of the field, and it's not going to get interesting. We've got a Dave Warren Power Sports Caution as Max Blair in the center line Motorsports number 111 has slowed to a stop, and he's got damage on uh, that entry, and he is going to try to limp that car into the heartbeat hot sauce hot pit, and I don't know that he's going to be able to make it. We've got 13 laps in the books, 37 laps remaining, and there is a good look at the four-time ULMS champ and the uh, defending O'Reilly Auto Parts Rookie of the Year, Max Blair. Tough break for him in that centerline motorsport. CJ Dairy, Creekside Auto Sales sponsored number 111. So he takes his helmet off. We'll have the drone look and see what happened to the, the defending O'Reilly Auto Parts Rookie of the Year. So 13 laps in the books, DJ. We'll get a look here and see what happened to the. Oh, that is well, there not you go. the. Uh, that was not the uh, replay. That was. Uh, that was seasickness at its finest, right there. <laughs> well. Max yeah, Max Blair out of the race car, so it looks like his night is finished, and uh, that is uh, that is a tough, tough break for the Centerville, Pennsylvania driver. Here's a look at the uh, instant replay from the drone. Top of the, yep, over the right side of your screen. Oh, man, yep. he made hard, hard contact with the wall. You saw the sparks fly and the tail end come out from underneath that race car. Hard contact with the wall will put an end to Max Blair's night. 13 laps in to tonight's 50-lap late model A main. So the first Dave Warren Power Sports Caution is underway to register for that 2024 Segway UT10 side-by-side. Go to DaveWarrenSegway.com. That'll be given away at Eldora at the Dirt Track World Championship. So DJ, 13 laps in the books. So 1.4 second lead is going away for Thornton. It'll be O'Neill second, Joyner, Madden, Moran, Owen sixth, Alberson, Hughes, Overton, Shepard tenth, and Shirley, Robinson, Tony Jackson, McCready, Bruning, your top 15. As there's a good look at Cody Overton now coming to the attention of, it uh, looks like uh, Zachary Booker down there, and is he maybe replacing a race receiver on Cody Overton's, uh, inside Cody Overton's race car, it looks like. And one thing we'll mention, I haven't been on a, a, a unfortunately, I haven't been on a broadcast yet. We mentioned it several times during the year last year, but for the folks watching at home, one thing I love that the Lucas Oil Series does is you see the caution flag laying inside, uh, in, inside the, uh, uh, race car right there. Obviously not as big of a deal right now with an official right there beside the driver, but they do that when they're working on the race car. A lot of times you can have someone underneath the back end of a race car, and quite frankly, a driver may not know uh, when to go or when someone is not working on the race car. With the Lucas Oil Series, and, and I would love to see other series follow suit with this as well, when that caution flag is laying uh, right in front of you like that, you know not to go. You know someone is there working on the race car. There you see Zach Booker uh, pull that caution flag away. That signifies to Cody Overton that he is clear he's able to go again not a big deal right there with with him uh, right inside the race car but when you've got someone maybe on the right side of the race car or underneath the back end of the race car as a driver with these full containment seats and the head and neck restraints uh, simply put your vision is very limited and you have no idea when someone is is around your car under your race car or alongside your race car so kudos to the Lucas series uh, for doing that I know some others have, have followed suit but I, I would love to see that become a universal rule across the country so another contender for the Todd Steel Buildings hard chargers Hudson he started sixth yeah and up to second here in this race he's good right now man i mean he's good right now you know we we talked earlier that or you mentioned earlier that i mean he's won two of the uh, uh lucas oil series uh, events this year of course he got a win at volusia back at sunshine nationals 1.0 as well so he's got three wins already on the year and uh, he's, he's up to eight speed weeks wins total in his career trying to make it nine here this evening all right, 13 in the books. It'll be Delaware double file behind your leader. O'Neill's picked the bottom on Joseph Joyner. Then it's Madden, Moran, Owens, Alberson, Hughes, Cody Overton, and Brandon Shepard, 10th. See how this plays out. Have they worked those crumbs up there a little bit through the middle top? We'll find out how it goes. I'm going to keep an eye on Cody Overton yep. as well. You just saw him there on the very right side of your screen. He's right behind Garrett Alberson. He's been running up on the high side of the racetrack. We'll see if he's able to make anything happen here in the 97 car as they uh, fly through the new race. Three stars up over back of the way. James again, 13 laps in the hooks. 37 laps to go. And Joseph Joyner trying to get around on the outside for second. He's got it. Here comes Moran in 99. We'll see how this plays out as we work lap 14. As they come out of four, down the straightaway, Thornton 
side by side at the line. Give it to Joyner at the front to second. He may have something working. He's got a lot of laps here. And I tell you what, he Dustin good. Jarrett, eyeball test early on. We've got a long way to go, but the 10 is hooked up. And here comes Miranda 99. And here comes Garrett Alberson. That top may be coming into it here oh. with 15 complete, my friend. Well, this is fun, man. Joseph Joyner, watch this. Watch the run he's going to get on the outside of the racetrack right here in the 10. He gets a great run down the back straight away through turns one and two. And he is indeed closing in on your race leader, Ricky Thornton Jr. He dives to the inside to battle for the lead. Devin Miranda's moved to third off a of turn four, 16. Here's the battle. Of the lead. Will we have a new leader at the loop? It's still Thornton, Joyner, O'Neill, Moran. Two by two up front at All Tech. And Joseph Joyner has never led a lap in the Lucas Oil Late Mother Dirt Series against one of the best in the business. We may have a lead change this time around, Dustin Jarrett. And survey says not so fast my friend nine one thousandths of a second ricky thornton jr stays out front i just saw something that last lap james when uh, when the 10 of joseph joiner whenever uh, whenever he kind of forced the 20 rt of ricky thornton to the outside coming off turn number two i wonder if that showed rt that there is a little bit up there to work with as you just saw him look he changed his line just a little bit his corner entry is a little different now his corner exit you know where he got that momentum the last time that is not uh, changed he stayed down to the bottom he did change his corner entry that last time around. The wet to keep our eyes on that. Ricky Thornton Jr. It was nine one thousandths of a second. RTJ now able to stretch out. We'll check it this time by uh, that lead 1.8 seconds to the 20 RT looking good. And now Joyner comes under fire from Devin Moran. Yeah, Moran and O'Neill's going to the top. O'Neill up against the wall. Down the back straight away on Devin Moran. The top two in the Lucas Oil points a year ago. They go side by side behind Joyner. Thornton continues the lead as we score lap 25, shy of the halfway mark. Garrett Alberson back to the bottom. Madden is six, Cody Overton seventh, Jimmy Owens, Brian Shirley, Spencer Hughes is 10. O'Neill slides up in front of Joyner. Joyner with the crossover. Good battle for second spot into turn three. Joyner, O'Neill, and Moran. As they come off a of turn four, you can toss a, a postcard over those three cars right there. Again, the blue rocket one. That is Hudson O'Neill, the black 10 on the outside. That's Joseph Joyner, Devin Moran married to the bottom of the double down motorsports 99. This all happens just under two seconds behind your race leader, Ricky Thornton Jr. And I tell you what, yeah, James, Hudson yeah. O'Neill is rolling on the high Eyeball side of the rocket here one. Before the halfway mark, you know Anthony Burles is probably going to tell Thornton, you're going to have to go to the outside or oh. you are going to get past. Hudson O'Neill just took nine tenths off RT's lead, James. Here he goes down the back straightaway. Right now, Moran, Joyner, Alberson, in the top five. Moran now, as Thornton is going to the top, as they come out of turn four. You called it. They're going to pick up the tail end of the field here. 23 laps complete. If we get the leader plus three, we do. Madden and Alberson are going at it side by side. That is for sixth and seventh. Brian Shirley is up, excuse me, Brian Shirley's up to seventh. We'll see what happens into three now. They're going to pick up the tail end of the field. they got two cars running side by side in front of them off a of turn four in Mike Marler and Boom Briggs. Yeah, you called it with the 20RT going to the high side of the track, James. Is, uh, he's worked his way back to the outside of the speedway. Looking back through the field there, there's the 10 of Joseph Joyner. He's in fourth momentarily. Chris Madden going to sneak by on the inside. That is fourth, fifth, and sixth on your screen. Madden in the 44, Joyner in the 10, and the 58 of Garrett Alberson. This time by halfway home, 25 laps in the books, 25 laps to go. Ricky Thornton Jr. back out front with a 1.3 second advantage. And James, he's in lap traffic. And Devin Moran has entered the chat as he's going to do battle with Hudson O'Neill in a battle for second. Right now, the early Todd Stu putting hard charger up five spots up to seventh is Brian Shirley from 12th. He was the hard charger the other night as we got three wide back here. Here comes Shirley. Ryan Shirley and those guys back here put it on as Thornton. It's five tenths of a second, the lead of the three. Battle for the lead. Thornton working through heavy traffic. He's got to watch out. I believe that's Tanner English in front of him. Down the main straightaway. Thornton, O'Neill, Chris Madden, oh, Devin Moran. Oh, what a move. What a move there by RT. He just split the 96V of uh, English and the 46 of Earl Pearson Jr. And man, uh, Devin Moran was, I mean, he was on him like a pack of dogs on a three-legged cat right there. And uh, that move by Ricky Thornton Jr. 
turned what was a one-tenth of a second lead into a 1.2 second lead in a matter of two laps. Now, Devin Wayne has got a car slowing on the main straightaway, heads to the pit area, out of the race in the infield. There's the battle back there. Madden and O'Neill, that's for third and four. Last time around, O'Neill had the spot in Madden. The lead is 1.2 the lead. Now Moran's going to have to split these cars. English and Pearson. Here comes Chris Madden yeah. and Hudson O'Neill. Yeah, they're battling for position. Yes, it's, sir. Uh, is uh, the uh, 46 and the 40 uh, or the 46 was back there. The 44 of Madden. Uh, that's a lead lap car. He's up there battling for the second spot right now. Is man, oh man, what business a move by is, Moran. Yeah, business is picking up, man. A great move there by Moran. A great move by Madden. And right now with Moran clearing Earl Pearson. And Jr. There's no lap traffic between himself and Ricky Thornton Jr. It's a 1.7 second advantage for the 20 RT James. The next car to go a lap down would be Jonathan Davenport. They come out of turn four. They work lap 31, still 19 to go, and Devin Moran has picked it up. It was 1.7. It's seven tenths of a second. He gained a full second wow. that last time around. Remember, Moran had to split him, and Devin Moran has got a good hot rod down the back straightaway. The last time around, he was the fastest car on the racetrack, Dustin Jarrett. Well, and again, lap traffic directly in front of your leaders. RT goes high. Dev goes low as they come down the front straightaway. It's still Ricky Thornton Jr. out front, 32 laps in, 18 laps to go. Thank you, Wendell Durant and the track prep crew. You've done a great job. We had to wait for it, but we've got a good track here tonight. Working lap 33, 17 to go. Thorne up top. Here comes Moran down low. Out at turn four. They're trying to go side by side for the lead in heavy traffic at the loop. It's about a car length lead for Thornton. It's two tenths of a second into turn number one. Now what does Ricky Thornton Jr. do? He's got Marla running in front of him. On the bottom is Jonathan. Davenport's going to slide up the track. Almost contact, but he stretches it out that time around. Madden is third, O'Neill is fourth, Alberson still in fifth, Dustin. Yeah, I mean, uh, it goes without saying. Look at the lap traffic. Look at the back of the field that RT is having to work through. Mike Marler, Tim McCready, Jonathan Davenport. I mean, that's what kind of pace these leaders are setting. And there's the three leaders on your screen. The 20 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. on the far left, on the far right. Devin Moran now comes under Madden. fire from oh, Chris Madden. Madden, Madden the elbow. Madden's the elbow. Spin. Madden spins after turning the fastest lap he had turned in the last lap. Oh. And he's still going all around. Oh, and he finally stops. Dave Warren <laughs> Power Sports caution is out. Well, oh, man. Madden drove in there hard. He got into Moran. I don't know that he meant to. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'll give Madden credit, man. He, he tried. He sure as heck tried to keep on going right there and try to keep the wheels from uh, from stop spinning. He got in just a little too hot. And uh, when he got into the side of Devin Brands 99, that sent the 44 around. Man, that is a tough break for him. That was a battle for second. Let's take a yeah. look at the instant replay and see what happened to the great court South Carolina driver going into turns three and four. Brands second, Madden third, making a bid right there. And there's contact and Madden goes around. Man, that was odd because they were almost side by side. I, I, I will stand correct. I thought that, uh, and there's a look at it from the infield of Madden trying hard to keep that car going. Uh, uh, very candidly, I thought Madden uh, drove it in a little bit deeper. They were almost side by side going in. So to be interested to hear from uh, Chris as to uh, as to exactly what happened. So 34 in the books, Dustin. Ricky Thornton Jr. still with the lead. Devin Moran will be second. Hudson O'Neill third. Garrett Alberson fourth. Joseph Joyner fifth. Sixth will be Jimmy Owen, seventh Brian Schur, the eighth Spencer Hughes, ninth Cody Overton, tenth Brandon Shepard Ben. Yeah, down here in the heartbeat, hot sauce, hot pit, Tim McCready, new right rear tire, the uh, one they pulled off this paywall, Mo Motorsports number 39, absolutely blistered, and I can promise you every single team is down here taking a look at it to see what it looks like right now, so something to keep in mind with 16 laps left. All right, well, as you heard Ben say, 16 laps to go, 34 laps are in the books. Ricky Thornton, Jr., your leader. Man, this one was uh, very interesting in lap traffic. Again, kudos to the track prep crew. I, I know it took a long time, uh, but uh, doggone it. Uh, we would not have had this had they not uh, did a little bit of track prep right. work out there. Right. So thank you to them. Hopefully it will it'll last be... for 16 more laps. Miranda cut that lead to two-tenths of a second, and then Thornton yeah. right now, nine-tenths of a second last lap, but that will all be erased here. And 
in the last several laps, I was checking out the uh, live timing in front of me. Chris Madden was the fastest race car on the track as well. So uh, he will have to come from the town. He, he does go to the tail end of the elite lap cars. Uh, but that still, I believe, will put him back in, I think, like 20th on this restart with only 16 to go. There's a look at the Franklin Enterprises Henderson Amusement 44 as he will tuck in line. I think right there, if I'm not mistaken, yep, in front of uh, the 39 and 49 and just behind the 157. So it's Thornton out front, James. Second uh, will be Devin Moran. Moran looks like he's going to choose the inside lane on this restart. Hudson O'Neill is third. Garrett Alberson is fourth. As you'd mentioned, Joseph Joyner rounds out the top five. Then it's uh, Jimmy Owens in, in sixth, Brian Shirley seventh, Spencer Hughes in eighth, Cody Overton is ninth, and Brandon Shepard will round out the top ten as the Dave Warren Power Sports caution lights are going to be turned off and the green flag will wave this time by. Well, that last restart, Joyner had a great run going for the lead. Now Moran in traffic, but Thornton is still out in front. He has led every lap, right? Yeah. As they go with the Nutrient X Solutions, we'll have another lap under caution. So Devin Moran is going to pick the bottom on Hudson O'Neill. Can Moran pick up and break through this Thornton O'Neill stranglehold we've seen early this season? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we will, yes, sir. We will. Uh, we will see. All right. So it's Thornton, Moran, O'Neill, Alberson, Joiner, Owens, Shirley, Hughes, Cody Overton, Brandon Shepard. Your top ten. Thirty-four scored. Sixteen to go at All Tech. Thorn's been in command from the start. We'll see on the restart how it goes. Here comes O'Neill and here comes Joseph Joyner at the race at the Nutrient Act Solutions restart zone, Dustin. And let's not forget for a few laps, HUD was really, really good. Tiptoeing around the top side of this half mile oval as well. But as it stands right now, Ricky Thorpe Jr. really, really good on these restarts. He's able to pull ahead of that battle for second that's on your screen between Devin Moran on the inside and Hudson O'Neill on the outside. James, this looks like Eldora last year at the Dirt Track World Championship. That top, you know, Thorne's going to go back to the top. O'Neill, Moran on the bottom, down the back straight away. Garrett Alberson fourth, Joyner is fifth, Owens is sixth. In the turn three, Ricky Thornton Jr. off at of turn four. 36 laps in the books. RTJ, your leader that last time by, by one full second. He goes to the top side down to turns one and two. We look back on the battle for fourth between Garrett Alberson and Joseph Joyner. Again, this happens uh, well behind your race leader. Is Alberson yep, now Alberson. trying to get the high side rolling? Look at Garrett Alberson up there in the Kenneth Beth Roberts Racing number 58, James. I think he might go right around Moran and O'Neill. We'll just have to wait and see. Can he make it stick now? Moran tries to go through the middle. Moran now. Good three-car battle for a second into turn three. O'Neill, Alberson trying to clear Devin Moran. Now to turn four. Does Garrett Alberson have a run, Dustin Jarrett? Yes! Garrett Alberson is the third and 58, and they're trying to go three wide into turn two briefly. You Down the back it. straight away. Alberson may take second. He does. You call Garrett it. Alberson on the move. And this happens a mile behind your race leader. Ricky Thornton Jr. has just absolutely turned the key in and checked out on the field as sparks fly off the 58 of Garrett Alberson. He has worked his way up to the second spot from the night position. Have yourself a night, Garrett Alberson. He took his lumps last year, man. Was not the year Garrett Alberson wanted to have. He finished 11th in the Lucas Oil Series point stands. Only got one win on the entire year last year. It was the uh, Ronnie Adams Memorial at uh, Boot Hill last year as we just saw the gap there between Garrett Alberson and the 20RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. All right, 10 laps to go. So it'll be a single file restart if we have a caution as we car slowing Mike Marler out of the race. They will pick up the tail end of the field. Here comes Thornton off for turn four. You see the gap there, Dustin. Several car lengths, about 20 car lengths, nine laps to go in this race. And I just got word from Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series Director James Essex that the Sands are running out of the hourglass here. <laughs> but Garrett oh, Alberson, uh-oh, uh -oh, this is going to be interesting now and, and going to play into what I just said as one car has spun to a stop at the top of the racetrack over in turn number four. It's the 25 of Tony Jackson Jr. Guys, with nine laps to go, I just got a very interesting piece of information from Rick Schwally. Amongst the top five drivers, Ricky Thornton Jr., your leader, okay. third place Devin Moran, fourth place Hudson O'Neill, fifth place Joseph Joyner, all have twos bolted on the right rear. 
Second place, Garrett Alberson has the harder three on the right rear. Nine laps to go, a four second lead for Ricky Thornton Jr. has been erased. Take Justin Fielder may have to do a show here at midnight tonight. Justin Fielder, you, 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 can, you can thank me later, brother. We appreciate all nine laps to go. So you're going to have yes. a few school of thoughts on that. One is going to be, in theory, there might be a little bit more left on that three than the two, but there's also the theory that the two may fire a lot better than the three. So there's a, there's a lot of different angles on that. But no matter what, I don't care who, if you're a fan, I don't care who your favorite driver is, you got to be happy for Garrett Alberson right now. What a drive he's having, and, and he's paid his dues. And right now, just to be up there at the front of the pack, that is something that young man deserves. And uh, he's he's mixing it up with the best in the business right now. You're absolutely right, Ben. I mean, his uh, his biggest career win. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. He got the uh, he won the uh, Thal Brawl yes, back sir. in 2021 for twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, that was uh, his biggest one, and uh, he's been chasing these. And last year, they changed chassis, they changed a lot of things. Big start to the year, guys. Lights are out. We're gonna have a nine lap oh, dash to the checkers here tonight at all tech all right there it'll be go. single files i mentioned just as i did that 10 or less laps to go it's single file nine to go now what do you do if you're out you know he's going to swing to that top yeah what is anthony burrows telling the 20 rt to go up there and protect we'll see how it goes and how how hungry is garrett alberson guys he's never won a lucas oil late model dirt series feature before could it happen here tonight ricky thornton jr's 20 rt fires very good on the restart devin moran dives down to the inside in a battle for second all right let's see what alberson to do as thornton drifts up the track oh, oh and alberson no. into the wall and garrett oh, alberson no. is off the pace Oh, Heartbreak Hotel man. for the New Mexico driver. A great run. Doggone it. And a shot at his first Lucas Oil win, as you mentioned, with nine laps to go may have just ended. Oh, man. Uh, I hate to, to see that. Yeah, yep. to Ben's point, I, I tell you what, uh, Ben, you know it, man. We don't play favorites. We get to know we're very fortunate to get all these guys on a personal level, but doggone it. There ain't a person in the pit area that does not like Garrett Alberson, and that dude right there greets you with a smile every time he sees you, no matter how his night is gone. No, absolutely. And and he went off when that when it restarted, that car did not fire, and you gotta wonder if that was the disadvantage to a three. And he went off in the corner and that car just took off on him, went straight to the wall. Uh, his crew's down here working on him, just totally, totally dejected right now, but waiting on the 58. But you just gotta wonder maybe that yeah. Could have had a tire going down. Either way, it did not take off the way it wanted to. And we're still going to have nine laps remaining in this one. But top three's been shuffled up just a little bit. Yeah, he pulled alongside with Devin Miranda, pulled alongside of him, and he was trying to get up there to that top. Thornton might have briefly touched the wall. So we'll go back to 41. So it'll be Thornton, Moran, O'Neill, Joyner, Owens, your top five. Then Hughes, Bruning, Cody Overton, Brian Shirley, Brandon Shepard. And man, oh man, you hate to see it. We, we, I mean, we like all these guys. All these guys put on a great show. They're the best of the business. They're late model drivers, right? I mean, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, and, we, and they're out there driving their hearts out and nine laps away from a possible victory, and it might all be gone here. Man, that is. That's tough. It's uh, uh, sentimentally, uh, you just uh, you can't you can't help but like. Garrett Alberson. I mean, again, he, there, there's a guy right there that uh, every single time he sees you, he greets you with a smile. Uh, just uh, very. He had started uh, ninth, so he had yeah. passed. He had passed, uh, passed everybody. Nobody had dropped out except in front RT. Of him. All right, buddy. Nine laps to go at the Nutrient Ag Solutions restart zone. Now, what does Devin Moran or Hudson O'Neill or Joseph Joyner have for RTJ as they go back underway here at Alltech? Well, I think a lot of the drivers behind your race leader saw. Uh, Garrett Alberson swing wide as Devin Moran gets a run to the inside of Ricky Thorne Jr. there. But nobody swung wide coming off four to the green flag. And that might have been, uh, you know, Alberson, he stayed high down in turns three and four. And, you know, you wonder if that played into factor. And now your lead duo goes high. Yep. Jimmy Owens now coming on the bottom. James Owens, your outside pole sitter rebounding. Battle up front for the lead. Battle behind him for third. That's what Owens has been trying to find. Speed late in the race. And he has found it after starting on the front row, dropping back to just inside the top. 10. Meanwhile, Devin Moran about three car lengths back. Hey, one bobble by RTJ, which would be uncharacteristic. And if he gets into the wall, you never know. Seven to go, Moran through the middle. Good battle side by side for third, Dustin, between Jimmy Owens and O'Neill. Yep, that's on the right side of your screen. For those of you watching at home, the battle up front for the lead on the left side of your screen. This time by 44 markers will go up on the scoring pylon. Six 
laps left to go. It's Ricky Thornton Jr., Devin Moran, Hudson O'Neill, Jimmy Owens, and Joseph Joyner rounding out the top yeah. five. Again, that battle for th uh, third is a good one between Hudson O'Neill and uh, Jimmy Owens, James. And there's a terrific battle between Joyner, Hughes, and Bruning back here. We may have to triple box it. They're trying to go three wide here off a of turn four. A Tyler Bruning coming yep. from the 17th starting spot up to battle for a top five in this one. Good run for the bearded one out of Decorah, <laughs> Iowa. All right, right now the deficit last time around, 1.4 seconds. They probably will not pick up the tail end of the field. Thornton into one, there's Moran. It's 1.5, then it's O'Neill, Owens, and in fifth is Joyner. Down the back straightaway. They'll have three laps to go, Moran. Last time around, he was a tenth of a second off of Thornton as they head down the main straightaway. Does Devin Moran have one last charge in him? It's 1.6, not looking good so far. Thornton almost stumbled in turn two, Dustin. And the Dave Warren Power Sports Caution is out of the track. And it's Cody Overton at turn four with three laps to go. Yeah, I tell you, that top side, man. We said it earlier, live by the sword, die by the sword. That top side, if you hit your marks, that, uh, that is undoubtedly the fastest way around this racetrack, but we've seen it bite uh, Garrett Alberson. We've seen it bite Cody Overton. And, uh, man, I mean, if, if you're Ricky Thornton Jr., that's obviously where your car is fastest. Uh, but you also know Devin Moran is fastest up there as well. It's hard to give up the top side of the racetrack knowing that the, that the 99 is going to be up there. Uh, RT, real quick, James, he had been putting a tenth of a second, as you noted, a tenth yep. of a second a lap yep. on Devin Moran. He had a 1.6 second advantage. Again, that lead is erased. It's a single file restart now with three laps to go. Yeah, and O'Neill and Owens, they had a good battle there. They were four to five seconds behind the leader. So it'll be Thornton, Moran, O'Neill, Owens, Joyner, your top five. Shout out to Joseph Joyner hanging right in the top five all race long. Tyler Brennan, as you mentioned, started uh, started 17th, he's 6th, Spencer Hughes 7th, Kyle Bronson 8th, Dalton Wilson 9th, Brian Shirley 10th. We still have 17 cars on the lead lap. Yeah, unofficial. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not calling it over. No, uh, unofficially, nope. uh, Tyler Bruning, the Todd Steele Building's hard charger of the race. He has passed 11 cars. Bronson has passed 10. Dalton Wilson's passed 10 as a fire in the Nutrient Act Solutions restart zone. Three laps to go for your leader, Ricky Thornton, Jr. You wonder on the right rear how much tread is left. Now O'Neill's going to go to the top. Here comes Jimmy Owens on the bottom. Do they have anything for the 20 RT? Will they lead all 50 laps tonight? Here comes O'Neill down the back straightaway. He'll have a run on Jimmy Owens, but there'll be two laps to go. Thornton getting away, but this battle for a second is going to go to the end. Two to go for RTJ. RTJ just too good on the top side of the racetrack. It looks like he's going to leave the field to battle for second and third behind him. Devin Moran in sole possession of the second spot. There's third, fourth, <laughs> fifth, and sixth yeah. on your screen. Thank Thank you, All Tech, for reworking this racetrack. You've done a tremendous job. Tyler Bruning from 17th inside the top five. It's the Barrett's one to go for your race leader, Ricky Thornton Jr. Right now, the deficit 1.1 seconds. He brings it out of turn two down the back straightaway. Moran still a side by side battle back here. Here comes Bruning on the bottom. Tyler Bruning looking for that Todd Steele Building's hard charger from 17th, trying to get into the top four. And Ricky Thornton Jr. is going to win his third Lucas Oil Race of the Year, Dustin Jarrett. Second spot goes to Devin Moran. Hudson O'Neill finishes third. Tyler Bruning from 17th to fourth. And Jimmy Owens will round out the top five here tonight at All Tech. Sixth unofficially, Joseph Joyner, Kyle Bronson comes from 18th. Oh, my goodness. And Ricky Thornton Jr., much like Kyle Larson last year at Golden Isles, loses the tail end of the race car on the cooldown lap, and Devin Moran slid into him at the top of turns three and four. Yeah, Thornton went off in there, and the car just took off on him, and he wow. packed into the concrete. But, hey, if, if you're going to lose it on a lap, it would be the cooldown lap. That's wow. the one, guys. So they were going to see it in replay here on Map TV and Flow Racing. you got to go to the UNOH scales. And past the drip check, this. here's what happened. This is the cooldown lap. And that thing just goes into a four-wheel free slide there. Huh. And Moran wow. with nowhere to go. That, uh, well, that was interesting. So they will go to the scale. So how about Tyler Bruning? Yeah, up 13 positions, James. He is 17th to fourth. Yes, sir. He is unofficially the uh, Todd Steel Building's hard charger of the race. Uh, Kyle Bronson gained 11 spots. He went from 18th to seventh. Dalton Wilson gained uh, 
excuse me, uh, 11 spots. He went from 19th to 8th. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say it. We would not have seen that. Uh, we would not no. have seen those guys passing that many cars. We would not have seen that race had they not reworked the racetrack. Uh, I know that, look, that li nobody's ever bad 1,000. Nobody's ever bad 500 in the history of baseball, right? People are We're, going to look at the results, say the guy led all 50 laps. It must have been a boring, terrible race, right? It's a great race. Really good really race. Really good race. Hat tip to Wendell and the track prep crew here, man. They, they did what they had to do. Uh, it, you know, maybe a little longer night than what we, uh, than what we wanted or anticipated, but uh, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of, a lot of places would have packed it in and just said run it wendell said no uh these uh, these pans these fans paid uh, their hard-earned money to come in here they wanted to see a great race tonight i want to give these fans a great race track to possibly put on a great show and he admitted it you know as ben talked about down there he said i don't know how it's going to go he said it may not be any good um but he went out there and at least gave them an opportunity and you know what it was good man it was it was really good uh wendell and staff thank you uh thank you thank you thank you for uh for for that uh as Ricky Thornton Jr. has made his way into the uh, tech area back there. And uh, he will soon be joining Ben Shelton down in Lucas Oil Products, Veland Victory Lane. Yeah, I really do believe, guys, without that track working, it was going to be a train race on the bottom. It really was. And uh, we had, instead, we get to showcase what all tech's all about. And tomorrow, they'll take a little bit of different different approach with it and a little bit different format. So, uh, you know, different uh, program there for the great late models. So, right and now, another thing, too, Ben, people will forget when they read the results, well, how well Garrett Alberson had a shot at a win here tonight. Uh, it's it's coming though, guys. We, we talk about guys like him and Dalton Wilson and Spencer Hughes, and, it, and it's coming and uh, heartbreak tonight, but uh, they should. We, we saw the speed at the Wild West shootout, DJ and I did, and we said then that Alberson was going to have a big year, and he's, he's showing a lot of potential, and he showed a lot of speed. As We've seen Devin Moran make his way back out. We see Hudson now making his way. We wait on your winner, Ricky Thornton Jr., guys, 12,000, and as long as he clears the UNOH scale area, he is going to become the first driver to ever win more than one Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt <laughs> Series event here. We've had five events, five winners, but after tonight, we would have six but only five winners if Ricky goes back to back. Uh, uh, ben, you are about yep. to be greeted by uh, what has, has started to become a, oh, uh, no. a winner national. Oh, yes. Ted. Oh, yeah, Ted. Oh, Ted is back. No. Hi, Ted. That teddy bear gives me nightmares, Good man. to see you. Well, Rigsby's down there shaking here, his hand as well. Here on the front straight, <laughs> Rick Schwally just went out and shake <laughs> Wendell Durrance's hand. Yeah. And they both gave a hug. Hey, they work their tail off. These promoters, every one of them yep. that we go to, work their tail off. People think they show up at 11 o'clock, put some water on the track, open the gates, collect thousands of dollars. That's not the way it works. Thank D you, DJ, get, get James a drink up there. Get him. He's had a tough night. James uh, has been on the uh, chip since we got here today. I tell you, a guy that worked hard tonight, and he's worked his way right into Lucas Oil Victory Lane, the VLAN feature winner, Ricky Thornton Jr. From Arizona to Iowa to Indiana to tonight in Ellisville, Florida, your winner, Ricky Thornton Jr., Wendell Track track owner, leans in to get a word with him and congratulates him. This will be Ricky's third win of the year in Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series competition. And as we talked about, not going to do the spoiler shuffle with only certain events counting toward the points, but he is your Midwest Sheet Metal point leader as we enter tonight, and he picks up a win tonight third win of the year 40 total wins last year across multiple divisions and of course 23 in lucas oil late model dirt series competition and he's going to try to break that record that was the single season win record he's going to try to break that here in 2024 and he's off to a heck of a start as he gets set to climb out of this coleman farms racing ssi motorsports 20 rt your winner tonight ricky thornton jr confetti flies Teddy Bears in victory lane, and Ricky's got the Sunoco checkered flag atop the race car. Ricky, the box score is going to show. What's that? It's that boy about to destroy this thing after the checkered there. Yeah, you did your best Kyle Larson impression. What happened down here in turn number four? Well, it looked like it was rubber down there, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go try it after the checkered, and I'm telling you, I was all I could do not to destroy the fence. <laughs> well, you didn't. You go back to back. Box score is going to show that you led all 50, but man, those restarts. What what was the biggest challenge of being the leader for 50 laps on this racetrack tonight? Man, it was like I didn't know if you needed to be around the top or on the bottom. Luckily, uh, Tharp was down there and letting me know where I needed to go. So I felt like without that, I don't know if we really would have won this deal. It, uh, you could look on the scoreboard and kind of see guys moving and moving and going back. So I figured the, the line had been moving around quite a bit. So. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. The last restart, I actually almost started around the top, but I was like, you know what? I've started every other time around the bottom. I don't want to take off and hit the fence or do something dumb. So it, uh, it worked out for us. 
you feel like you touched about half the concrete around this oval. After I looked up, there were sp- there were sparks coming off. At one point early in the race, Joseph Joyner pulls up alongside of you, but you kind of maintained your groove. Were, were you starting to rethink things once you saw that ten car show? Show uh, really more than his nose. He was door to door with you. I'll say I think at one point down the back straightaway, he cleared me. So I don't know. I he got down there, and I'm like. I felt like I was running as hard as I really could, trying to save my right rear. That way, if it did clean up, like it, like we didn't know for sure what it was going to do. So he uh, he got by me, and I'm like, man, I got to start driving a lot harder. And I actually found a pretty good line through one and two, and uh, I, I split the two lap cars, and I felt like I got a really good run. So like I just kind of kind of kept that in the back of my mind. If I needed to do something crazy through traffic, I, there was a line that nobody was running. But uh, I don't know, can't can't say enough. Uh, from my boys, Burroughs, DJ, Tharp, uh, Darla flew in today, my wife, my boys, uh, my little girl are, are here, so it's pretty cool. Uh, Hoker Trucking, Bigger Steel, Coltman Farms, uh, Bill Stein Shocks, Longhorn Chassis, uh, uh, Ultra Shield Seed, Sharp Advantage, uh, MD Wraps, Dirt Car Lift, uh, Chris and Mitch, Midwest Sheet Metal, I always forget, I, like I forget them. So uh, there's, there's so many great partners that help us get up and down the road, all the fans for uh, sticking it out tonight. Hopefully the future was just as good as we hoped. How many times is there a teddy bear waiting to take a picture with you in victory lane? (laughs) Not very often. (laughs) Race fans, Ricky Thornton Jr. is your winner here tonight. We'll catch up with second and third on the Big River Still podium. Devin Moran comes home in position number two, the Dresden, Ohio driver. And he showed his hand throughout the event, tried to make bids to get to the lead, just could not quite get it done. But still, a solid night for the driver. Uh, the Double Down Motorsports number 99, and he's over getting a word with Rick Schwally, series director. Devin, man, I tell you what, you it was cold out here tonight, buddy. I got the hoodie up. Dude, you were throwing it at him. Everything, late race restarts. just seemed like there just wasn't quite enough, other than whatever Ricky found on the cool down lap that you had to spin to miss him. Yeah, I thought we were both totaling our, our junk down there. I think he was just trying to run the bottom, and after the race to see how it was, and it was way slicker than what that rubber was at the top. But uh, I just want to say thanks to Wendell, you know. Uh, this place don't usually rubber, and it was rubber today, and, and they figured out a way to give us a good track. I know it's a little later, but but it ended up being a really good race. So I want to thank him, and uh, hopefully he can just put a little water on tomorrow, and, and we'll come out here and uh, put on a heck of a show tomorrow night. You haven't got one, but you flirted with Victory Lane so many times here. I feel like this place really suits your driving style, especially when it's like it was in the feature. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I once again, I love Florida. Everybody knows that, and uh, I love coming to Alltech. This is one of my favorite tracks to race at. So, uh, once again, thanks, Wendell. Thanks for all the fans for coming out and staying for this, and uh, we'll try again tomorrow. Just want to thank Roger Sellers and Double Down Motorsports, Robbie, Casey, Connor at home, uh, Lazy Days RV, Big River Steel, CNW Trucking, um, Bo Mag and Southeastern. Um, I want to thank uh, Pee Wee's Record Service. I've got so many great partners on this, Big River Steel. Um, I have so many great people. Don't have my Haskell suit on tonight, but I do want to thank Bilstein and, and uh, Ibach and uh, um, the Haskells and just, like I said, my, my family, my wife. I want to thank her. Um, can't wait to see everyone come down next week at East Bay, so I'm excited. Devin Moran second on the Big River Steel podium here tonight. And rounding out your top three on the Big River podium, Hudson O'Neill. He's getting a word with his car owner, Mark Richards. Yeah, I about biffed it right there. I about went down there. Sheep's foot holes are legit. Huddy, man, at one point you had found that top before anybody else did, and you were having some big runs. Then about that time, Moran moved up. Uh, It seemed like as the race went on, maybe, I don't know if the groove wasn't there as much as the car, but to come out with another podium, just talk about your race tonight and maybe what you needed to be where Ricky's at right now. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, I got lost on the racetrack a little bit there uh, th- three three quarters of the way through and let Devin get back by me and then let Alberson and and uh, had a couple fall out which helped me get back to the podium. But uh, all in all, we had a really good uh, really good night, felt like. Uh, you know, we were able to get the second there really early. And, and uh, this place has just changed so fast. You, you were up, down, up, down, up, down. I swear I changed lines 15 times throughout the race. So, uh, I just can't thank all my guys, Mark, Danny, Joel, Austin, uh, my girlfriend, my dad's here with us, everybody back at home watching, and uh, all the fans, and everybody on this race car, Valvoline, Sliver Calf Ranches, O'Neill Savage and Recycling, Wheeler Metals, uh, Gunner's Honey, Ace Metalworks, uh, Professional Concrete Cutting and Drilling, Rocket Chassis, Rocket Pre-Owned, Fox Shocks, uh, Andy Durham Race Engine, Snoco Race Fuel, Styles Marine, uh, everybody that's a part of it, man, we'll uh, see if we can't uh, improve by a couple spots tomorrow night. Right on at your Big River Steel Podium, Hudson.